Yet both invest in significant time and resources in Jewish causes and American politics. It wasn't long before they discovered APAC, where Barbie became fundraising vice president and Larry became president. I thought that my future, my children's future and so on, would be much more tied to trying to do something that could make a difference for Israel's future, for Israel's survival. And of all the different organizations, to be the one that made the difference it was APAC. APAC was something that was my father's thing, my mother's thing, and they were meeting with prime ministers and presidents and senators. I said, you know what? I'm never going to be able to do that, so I'm going to do my thing. My grandparents both brought me to my first policy conference when I was 15. So Daniel went off to Washington, D.C. and came back and said, that's for me. I realized that as an individual that wasn't a politician, I could still make a significant difference in the future of the U.S. and the future of Israel and to create a strong U.S.-Israel relationship. He became more and more involved over the years. And he became the youngest member, I think, of what's called NLN, the Leadership Network. He was, at the time, the key contact for a congressman from rural South Carolina who didn't have a Jew in his district. It was so incredible to watch him and to see the congressman really respond to him. I realized at that moment that APAC had to be for every generation. Jan had been active in her congregation. But now, she worked with her rabbi to recruit more pro-Israel activists for policy conference. My mom is a, a force to be reckoned with, and she makes such a difference. We have 287 people coming. Yes, yeah! I think one of the most important things I've been able to do with my work at Sinai with respect to APAC is to give people who are a lot like me six or seven years ago, who may have been people who wrote a check once a year to APAC, or maybe they didn't, they just read about APAC, but they were concerned about Israel. And what I've done is given them the ability to move from just being concerned and frustrated to having the ability to feel like they're actually doing something too. the tools I use in recruiting for the APAC policy conference is telling people that my son Daniel met his wife Jackie through APAC. And right now Jackie and I are very involved in getting young professionals in, uh, in the political networks and getting them in, involved in political activism so they can see that they can make the same kind of difference that I learned that I can make for my grandfather. You might call it a family business, so many of our family care deeply, go to APAC meetings, and are committed themselves to APAC. We have members of three generations who represent the entire political spectrum. We all love Israel, and we all find a home at APAC. I commit to APAC because I believe helping APAC to strengthen the U.S.'s relationship is important for the Jewish people and important for the United States of America. I commit to both APAC and pro-Israel politics because I think together they make a difference in strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship. Instead of coming into a situation where we'll be too late to help, APAC empowers us to be proactive, build relationships with members of Congress, to help support the U.S.'s relationship.